G'day guys, welcome back to the Farm Learning Channel. Can you believe it's 2026 already? And I thought for my first video of this year, I'd do a really short one, just updating you on the fantastic job that this cover crop is doing in my vineyard. Now, the first thing I wanna do is talk about water saving because that's one of the first things that this cover crop is doing for me. It's not only cycling water in the small water cycle at night, and standing up lovely and proud every morning, but it's also keeping the soil temperature dramatically low. Let me come and grab the camera and I'll give you a bird's eye view of what the soil temps are on bare ground, cover crop, and the old weedy grass that I used to have between the vines. Okay, so first up, we've got the grass sward that was pretty common in the vineyard before I put in the cover crop. And we've got 26 degrees, 34 degrees, 31 degrees. There's a little bit of variation there. Now we'll go to the cover crop. We've got 19 degrees, 19 degrees. and 18 degrees. Now we've got some bits here that I missed with the seed. So we've got some bare ground, naughty me. 46 degrees, 61 degrees, and 50 degrees. So you can see that there's definitely an advantage to having a cover crop in terms of soil temperature. I know where I'd rather live. Now, some people might be worried about a reduction in the yield of the grapevines because of competition with the cover crop. Well, at this early stage, there's no sign of any reduction in yield. I can certainly tell you that, despite this being quite a challenging season so far, I don't have any disease in the grapes and the yields looking fantastic. The other concern might be bugs from the cover crop coming and eating my grapes. But I can tell you there are so many spiders living in the canopy of these vines that I've got biodiversity working for me, not against me. So I don't have to worry about the moths that I see happily flying around here in the middle of the day. Now, of course, because of the biodiversity in the mid row, I've also got some fantastic plants working for me in the vineyard. I've got my legumes that have got root associations with nitrogen fixing bacteria. I've got species like vetch that have really close associations with fungi that can release phosphorus that's bound to soil particles. I've got plants like these brassicas that are breaking up the soil and reducing compaction, increasing water storage, airflow and root depth. I've got a lot going on in the mid row that's saving me money because I'm not gonna to have to buy fertilizer to compensate for degraded soils. I've also planted non-competitive, low-growing species of plants under the vines. So I'm treating my mid-row different to my undervine. I've effectively got two different kinds of multi-species crops in here. The idea behind that being is I don't have to use herbicide anymore, which then creates dead soil, which is then a colonizing point for pathogens that will affect my crop. And of course my routine's changed as well. Instead of spending time spraying out preventative toxins to kill things before they emerge, I'm spending that time carefully looking at what I have and intervening where necessary. I can't go completely away from chemicals. After all, I'm growing a horticultural crop, but I can dramatically reduce their use dramatically and increase my profit along the way. Now do me a favor and send this video to someone who you think would be interested in what's happening here on the vineyard and indeed amazing stories from real innovators around the country that are focused on profit not yield. And if you like this don't forget there's a free easy way to support the channel that's that little subscribe button down there. You wouldn't know what a big difference that makes in getting the word out. We'll see you next week with something else.